Yeah, I'm told I should move this microwave, microphone away from me. I, I was sharing with, with, with our table that prior to me getting saved, I, I told somebody I was in the Marine Corps, he said, oh, that's where you got that booming voice. And I said, no, not really. I, I didn't actually begin to speak loud until after I got saved. And, and I shared the story before that I was at a church and I preached there for the first time and my wife was in the basement taking care of some kids. And she heard all this rumbling noise upstairs. And so she asked her co-worker, who is that all loud like that? And they said, that's your husband. <laughs> and listen, I had never preached there before, and, and it's like God transformed my voice. Prior to that, prior to salvation, people would actually ask my wife, does he talk? Because they never heard me say anything. And, and I, what I tell them, I'll tell you, if I didn't say anything because I didn't have nothing to say. But, but God didn't fill my heart, and then now he's filled my, my, my soul with, with words from him, and I got something to say. And listen, I need to be heard, and so he's given me this voice. I try to temper it sometimes, but it just don't work. So I simply ask the Lord to use me and bless as he sees fit. Amen? Amen. Today, as the Lord allows, we are in the epistle and letter of Philippians. And my scripture reading, my intro verses are going to be coming out of chapter 2. And I'll begin at verse 1 and reading a few of these in my primary message is going to be coming out of chapter 3, but I'll be reading here in chapter 2, beginning at verse 1 of this great book of Philippians. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. And he writes here, Paul writes here, he says, if, they, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, he says, if any bowels and mercy, the King James says here, and, and listen, as Paul's reading this or writing this, he, he's presupposing that as believers all these should be present. In verse 2 he says, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. And, and of course he's talking about the mind of Christ and he's writing to this church and he's writing to us, even from his heavenly perch with scripture still left for us, that, that we are to have the mind of Christ. And he's going to go ahead and talk about that in a little bit. In verse 3 he says, let, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. In other words, I shouldn't be doing anything because I'm seeking my own motives, but I ought to be doing it because I'm seeking to please the Lord. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. In verse 4, Paul writes here, he said, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In verse 5, he hits us right between the eyes. He says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, and that was his eternal essence, he says, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, and because in, in reality, from the spiritual, he is in verse 7 he said, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And listen, here you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit doing their God things. And look, he volunteered to come down to earth, to put on flesh, to dwell among us. And in other words, he took the form of a bondservant, and a bondservant is always doing the will of the one who is over him. And that's what Christ did. In verse 8 he says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And listen, in obedience to God, he willingly came to earth, put on flesh, and died for sins that were not his, but sins that were ours from past, present, and future. And listen, he did that only with one motivation, and that motivation, simply put, was his love for us. In verse 9 it says, Wherefore God has also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. And by the way, guys, there's none higher. And in verse seven, uh, verse 10, he said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And listen, what Paul is helping us or reminding us of is that, guys, there's going to come a time when all these folk, all these demons, all these things that think that they're exalting themselves above God, that, that they're getting over on God, or even that they're getting over on, on, on the world and, and thinking that there's never going to be any recompense. He's saying that there's going to come a time when all are going to bow. And my prayer for us who are in here today, I pray that you have bowed on this side, that you've already bowed, and acknowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Because if you have not on this side, you surely will on the other side. Amen. And listen, the reason why I know it's true, because God said so. Amen. And he's put all authority in the hands of his son. Guys, I would ask that you be prayerful with me as I preach around the subject. Old things are passed away. And Father, as we dive deeper into this great epistle, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will hide me, your teacher, your preacher for the hour. Hide me behind the cross of Christ. And Father God, allow these words that you have handpicked for this congregation, for this group of men. And Lord, as we preach, as, as we speak, as, as we rationalize your truth, as you have given us utterance and understanding, Father, I pray that you will... Allow me, Father, to be first partaker that you'll plant these seeds in my heart first. And, and Lord, even for this group, Lord, that you'll bless them and meet them right where they live. And, and Lord, as the truth fits, Father God, that you'll bless them to wear it. Mm -hmm. As we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, amen. Mm -hmm. And amen. Paul begins in chapter 3, verse 1. If you're with me, please say amen. 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 And he says here, he says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. He says to write the same things to you. He says to me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you, he says, it is saved. And, and listen, as I read this, and, and, and listen, I, I've studied some of his other books, and, and he said something similar to what he's saying here. And he said, look, if i got to say it over and over and over, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. He said, because I know that once you get it, it's going to not only help you to be safe, but it's going to keep you safe. In verse 2, he gives them a warning. He said, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. And listen, Paul is telling them to beware. And he's saying of dogs, and we know during that time they were scavenging dogs. They would run around and would eat and devour whatever they could find. But he's actually talking about these guys. He says here the concision. He's talking about these Judaizers that are going into the Gentile churches and they're trying to convince them that no, I think it's a great thing that God has saved you, but you also need to still keep some of the tenets of the law. You still need to be circumcised. And listen, what they were trying to do is take them back to a work system. And listen, even during our time, you have some folks are trying to take you back to a work system. And he's telling them to beware of them when they come into your proximity. In verse 3 he says, for we, at least some of my believers here, are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. And he says, and have no confidence in the flesh. And listen, he's talking about the circumcision. And, and listen, we know they would call the Jews the circumcision because they were, they were set apart by God. They were circumcised. But he's saying that, listen, we're circumcised, but from the inside out. And look, our works had nothing to do with it. And James helps us with that. He, he said that, that if there's faith, then there's going to be some godly work coming out of that. But you can't work to be saved. And look, he's reminding that church, and listen, he's saying, you don't want to go back down that slide. You want to stay where Christ have you. And he says that we have no confidence in our flesh or in our fleshly efforts, guys. And there are some even today that they think that, that they can work their way to heaven. They, they think if I knock on enough doors and, and do enough work that God's going to approve me. They think if I can open enough hospitals or help enough old ladies or, or do enough good deeds that God's going to save me. But Paul's reminding them, he's reminding us as well that our works can mount up to a hill of beans apart from the work that Christ has given the believer to do. He says in verse 3, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit, he says, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. 
he goes on and he begins to build himself up. At least it appears. He says in verse 4, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof, he says he might trust in the flesh. Paul says, I more. And listen, what he's trying to paint a picture here, and he's saying that if anyone could ever get to a place of working their way into heaven, it would have been me because of the works that I did, if it was ever possible. In verse 5, he begins to lay down his pedigree. He says, circumcise the eighth day. And listen, of course, that according to the law. He said, of the stock of Israel. In other words, he's saying he's a descendant from Abraham. He says, of the tribe of Benjamin. And we already know that's the elite tribe. He says, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. And Paul is saying that as far back, I don't need genealogy.com. I can trace my family history all the way back to, to Abraham. And, and I know that's right from the fleshly perspective. He says that's touching the law. And, and listen, he doesn't even go on and explain about him and what he did in regard to the law. He simply uses one word. He says, uh, Pharisee. And listen, they were supposed to have been heavy. They were known for, for quote-unquote keeping the law. And listen, to that. it was a group of guys like this, and a Pharisee would come in, and somebody would stop talking. They would all sit down because they would recognize the Pharisee, including Paul or Saul, when he would come in the room, and nobody wanted to say anything because they just figured these guys are just too heavy. And we can't go against them. And Paul's laying out his pedigree. And even saying that if it was possible for it to happen, that it would have happened to me. In verse 6, he continues concerning zeal. He says, persecuting the church. And listen, they actually thought that the church were enemies to, to those who were, were worshiping God, in not in truth, but in work. He said, touching the, the righteousness, which is of the law. He uses one word there as well. He says, blameless. And that's how them guys thought. They thought we had it all together. That nobody knows truth like we do. Nobody's conducting the law or doing or keeping the law like we are. And he goes on in verse 7. He says, but look, what things were gained to me. And I like the verbiage because he's saying past tense. He said, those things I counted lost for Christ. And look, he's saying for the, my blood lineage, much of my family, they turned against him. In fact, they were trying to kill Paul. And he said for all that, when God opened my eyes, and with everything I was doing, or thought I was doing, I realized, hallelujah, I wasn't doing nothing. And, and listen, many of us can understand what Paul's talking about here. When we are coming through life, and we thought we had life wired. And thought we were doing things the way it should be done. Thought we knew all about marriage. Thought we knew all about relationships. Thought we knew all about how far we could go in, even in regard to sinning. And, and listen, God got a hold of you as well and, and blessed you with some understanding, uncanny understanding, spiritual understanding from the inside out. And you realize that you didn't know nothing. That God knew it all. And like Paul, you had to be divested of self so that he could pour some truth into your heart. And, and by the way, that was accomplished by the Holy Spirit. He says in verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things, he said, but lost for the law. Excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom, he says, I have suffered the loss of all things, uh, again, all these folk, all his family, all his pharisaical brethren had turned their backs on him. <clears throat> he said, and do count them but dung. In, in other words, that's waste, guys. We know what that is. He said that I may win Christ. Yeah. A guy like Paul, I thought I had life wired. Man, I could go anywhere and work and do anything. If something needed to be done, they would come to me and I knew I could get it done. had a woman on my mind and one on each arm and wasn't slowing down a lick and just thought I had this thing called life wired. And along comes Jesus Christ. 
And, and guys, I thought, no, like Paul, I thought nobody could knock me off my feet. And, and listen, he thought nobody could stop his march either and, and, and put me down and, 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 and begin to speak from the inside out. And, and I realized that everything I thought I knew, all that I thought I was doing, all that I thought I, I could accomplish, I realized it was not anything. And I dumped it for the excellency. Jesus Christ. And man, that thing hit Paul like a ton of bricks. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And I pray it hit you like a ton of bricks as well. And look, it hit me so fast that my wife did not even believe that this thing was real. She was sitting back waiting to see me go back to the old. But I never went back because God had me. And I pray he's got you as well. Amen. And look, like Paul, he didn't go back. In fact, he pressed on, and he's going to talk about that in a while. And, and I dare say, guys, for we who have been blessed of God through the finished works of Jesus Christ, man, there's no place else for me to go. All my mess, all my foolishness, all the things I thought I knew. And, and listen, again, I had to divest me like he had to divest uh, Paul and, and taught me a brand new truth. And in fact, because I knew no truth prior. Christ. In verse 9 he says, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that he says, which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God he says, by faith. Because I was involved in decent organizations. We wasn't going around sinning. We, we are like clubs and, and we're doing, how we call ourselves doing good things. And we were helping these and, and, and helping them and, and, and helping this one over here. And, and of course, at the end of what we were doing, we had to have, of course, a beef and beer. Or oh, we had to do this. Or oh, we had to do that. And, and listen, what I realized, we thought we were doing a good thing. But the, at the end of the day, what they were doing, they were praising us, praising our club, praising us individually. And God got none of the glory. And he was not pleased. And it just seemed like the more I did, the less I felt like I actually did anything as God was narrowing into my heart and blessed me with salvation. And I realized that I needed to get low in order for God to build me up. When salvation hits a person, like it hit Paul, Everybody is not immediately knocked off their feet and struck blind. But there ought to be a change in the way we think yes. and in the way we do things Amen. and even our mindset. And listen, we're growing in grace where none of us are there. Paul's going to mention that as well. He's not there either. But, but what he is saying is that there ought to be a change in our lives and, and the way that we do things, that we no longer do it the way we used to. And, and listen, I'm not trying to pump up glory for myself, but I need to make sure that my Lord and Savior gets all the praise and all the glory because I can only do because he has blessed me to do and he has done before me. And if he can't get the glory out of what I'm doing, then perhaps there's something that I should not be doing. Amen? Amen. He says in verse 9, to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, <clears throat> but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. In verse 10, and listen, he goes on, and, and he's not done yet here. He says that I may know him, and look, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, Paul goes on, being made conformable unto his death. And listen, he's talking about to know him intimately and the power of his resurrection. God, guys, think about this. Christ was on the cross and he died and they buried him. And after three days, guys, he got up. That's all power, and that's the power I have working in me by his Holy Spirit that has blessed me from the kingdom of darkness and raised me up in Christ Jesus with brand new eyes and a brand new heart, and hallelujah, now I am doing something worth mentioning, and as you mention it, I give God all the glory. That's power. Amen. 
Yes. Because I was blind, but now I see. I was dead, and he raised me up. Hallelujah. Because in sh for sure, I was a dead man, walking and talking. And Christ, he gave me life. And guys, not only did he give me life, he gave me his life. Because he died in my stead. Verse 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And by the way, guys, there are sometimes as a believer we suffer not because we've done wrong, but we suffer because we associated and affiliated and we fellowship with Christ Jesus, our Lord. He went through, we will go through as well. Amen. I was talking to somebody the other day and she was going through a hard time and I said, well, you know, God's got you. I said, you know him as your Lord and Savior and you know he's got you and he's going to keep you and bless you. And she says, yeah, I know that. And I said, well, you repeat back to me, who's got you? And she said, God's got us. Because she didn't want anybody to hear her say that. And I said, well, when you pray, who are you going to be praying to? And she said, I'll be praying to God. I said, look, don't hold that so close to your vest. It's no problem or no shame to be associated with it, with him. He's the one that's keeping you and blessing you. And listen, sometimes we hold our Christ cards so close to our vest that the only person that knows that we have a relationship with him is us. And God... Because we don't let that fly in the wrong company. <clears throat> Paul had no problem. Had a whole lot to lose. And, and guys, we ought not to have a problem either. Uh, many times I'll wear a hat that says Jesus or I'll wear a cross. And, and listen, I'm not wearing that because I'm trying to look holy. I want somebody to look at that shirt or that hat or that cross and ask me a question. What is that all about? And I can sit down or stand there and say, I'm glad you asked. And I can brag on my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Paul says that I may know him, verse 10, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. And by the way, guys, everyone who had a prayer request, and some of those sounded like they actually it could be doom and gloom. And look, we don't know, but he has the power Amen. to change any scenario <laughs> at any time if he chooses to. So as long as somebody's breathing, hallelujah, there's always hope. And, and listen, even if he takes us, then he says, Paul says, that that's gain. Mm -hmm. That's victory in the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If, verse 11, by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. <clears throat> Paul said, listen, my heaven's looking mighty good to me right now. And look, we know he, what he went through and beaten and battered and left for dead. And, and he said, that, listen, I know that's my ultimate dream. And verse 12, it says, not as though I have already attained. And, and listen, we look at this guy who has written more books in the New Testament than any other writer. And he said, that I'm not there yet. Gives me hope as well. Mm -hmm. He says that, that if I might, he says in verse 12, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow, he says, if that I may apprehend, and he's talking about getting more of, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. And, and what he's saying is that right God <coughs> gave me through the finished works of Jesus Christ. When Christ went to the cross, he gave me everything he had. He gave me both barrels. He said, for you, Brother Ralph, and I make it personal, I am not going to hold back a reserve. And he listen, he told those Romans, he told the world, give me your best shot, because you're only doing this one time, and one time only, God gave me his best. And he gave me all of him. And what Paul was saying, that I'm learning, and I want to give him all of me. And listen, I don't know about you, but man, if I mess up, 
If I tell, speak out of term, if, if I do something or even think something that I shouldn't do, it breaks my heart because I know I'm going against my God. And I don't want to cause him any kind of strife for my behavior. Should I grow? And he's blessing me to grow. And, and guys, I understand I won't give him all until I get to heaven. But moment by moment, day by day, I ought to be growing, hallelujah, in grace. And you ought to be growing in grace as well. Guys, my, my clock is saying quarter of I'm looking at that. I think it's fast. I'm going to close out real quick. And Paul's reminding us that he's trying to give him everything he's got. He says in verse 12, not as although, not as though he says I had already attained, either were already perfect, that I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, verse 13, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And he says in verse 14, and I'll end here, I press for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And, and listen, that's the call on Paul's, the apostle's heart, and I dare say it ought to be the call on our heart as well. Guys, where you're lacking, where you're not doing, where you're not submitting, God is calling you to submit it all to him. And I dare say when we do that, not only does he get the glory out of every aspect of our lives, but your life and your living will go oh so much better if we're doing life God's way. Food for thought, not just for me, but for you as well. If God's calling you to do something, do it. If he's calling you to stop doing something, stop it. If he's telling you to follow him, and no matter where it might be, you go and follow him and give him everything you got because he gave you everything he's got. And submit your lives and submit your bodies and submit your household and submit your all in all to the finished works of Christ and watch him take that and straighten it out and bless you even more than you're blessed right now. We'll taste and see. That the Lord, He is good. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this ministry time, for this time in which I can gather before these men, Father God, and simply give them what you have given me to give. And Lord, I pray, I'm first partaker, I pray for each and every one in this room. And Lord, if there's anyone struggling in any area of their life, I pray you give them the power that lies within to not go there anymore. Be with our sick and affirm. Bless those that are on our prayer list. And Father God, continue to encourage us in Christ Jesus. <coughs> in whom we pray with much thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Thank you for tearing with me.